Assalamu alaikum my friend and welcome to the beautiful city of Chef Shaolin. I'm in the Reef Mountains just about an hour and a half east of Tangier. This city is called the Blue Pearl for its beautiful blue buildings tucked here high in the mountains, high altitude. It's a really beautiful place. I can't wait to explore it. So come along for some food, some history, and we'll learn why the Blue Pearl is so damn beautiful. Let's do it. All right, so I finally made it to the old Chef Shaolin. Whew. It's been quite a journey to get here. I first heard about the city like five years ago when I first went to Spain. People said, you have to come here. And since I hadn't been to Morocco, this is always on the top of my list. So very excited. We're gonna walk into the Medina through this gate here, which was built in 1475 by the founder of the city. This is a really old city, but not nearly as old as many of the other cities that you'll find here in Morocco. But because it's blue and beautiful and well painted, a lot of people track up into the mountains to see it, just like me. So let's see what we find. So first things first, when we're walking through the Medina, I want to explain to you why it's blue. So there are many theories about the blueness of this city. One may be that the blue represents the sky and the heavens above in Islamic culture. That's one theory. Another theory is that in the 1970s, the city decided to just paint itself blue to attract tourists. Also another theory. The third theory, which I just heard from some man who just stopped me and decided to give me a little history lesson, was that they painted the walls blue here, one, to keep the mosquitoes away, and two, to help insulate the homes, which I'm not sure what exactly he meant by that, but he was explaining that the Jews lived on the outside of the city and the Islamic Arabs in the center, and when the Jews moved in, they decided that they would paint the houses blue. Now, I have no idea if that story is correct, I like the mosquito idea, you know, mosquitoes want to stay, like, are afraid of blue, I don't know. Um, I kind of think it's for the tourism. Could be. It's really beautiful though. Really, really beautiful. So we're here high in the Reef Mountains, and the Reef Mountains are very particular because they hold an ethnic group that is very special to Morocco, to Mauritania, to Algeria, and these are the Berbers. The Berbers were the original people here that predate the, the Arab influence that came in through Spain and through the East, as well as the Ottoman influence that also came in through the East. So these are like the OG people. They of course speak Arabic and they speak French or Spanish or whatever the, the local language is, but they also speak their own native language, um, which you can see written on a lot of different uh, uh, like administrative buildings and things like that. So also here, as we had in the Tatooine episode. Because we're in the mountains, you can of course get free uh, mountain spring water everywhere you go. Whew, it's cold, it's fresh, it's nice. Wow, this place is really as blue as I thought. So, back to the Berbers. There are many different kinds of Berbers and they speak different languages. So, they're called Berbers all under sort of like one union. There's Berbers in the north, there's Berbers in the south, there's Berbers in the, uh, in the, in the middle of the country. Um, there are similarities, there are also differences, but uh, the main similarity is that they are all ethnic minorities here in Morocco, and they can be found in the smaller cities. So especially when you go up into the mountains or into the small villages, people typically dress um, in a specific way to kind of indicate that they're from a Berber place and the vibe is, is a little bit different than what you would find in the typical bigger um, Arab-dominated city here in Morocco. So you can typically identify Berber people by what they are wearing, more so than anything else. So the fun thing is that they, they make these hats with little tassels and little brightly colored fluff balls, and you can see that um, they have them on shirts, they have them on hats, and uh, the one specifically that I like is they have them on clothes. So this is obviously like a shirt for a baby, but they have the little puff ball. And you'll see people walking around everywhere with things like that. Here is a better example of the 
Berber hat that they have here. And they have all the different styles. Oh, I saw a lot of it. What's the name of the name? Pequena. Pequena. No, no. Cheshire. Cheshire. Okay. Merci beaucoup. Okay. It's called a Cheshire, apparently. So I gotta find. You'll see people walking around with them. It's uh, it's always interesting. Wow, this place is so beautiful. And even here on the walls, you can see a traditional painting they've got here with uh, women wearing the Shashia hat. Um, it, the interesting part is when I see these people, they look very similar to what people look like in rural Mexico. And sometimes I think the Spanish presence that, that was experienced here in Morocco and that also it was, of course, colonized in Mexico, there's like some weird overlaps that I see. And I also see some overlaps with my time in Vietnam um, because also the French were here. So these weird like local communities, totally separate, but they also have some like very interesting similarities, which I love about Morocco. It's so like deeply rich and familiar, but also very deeply rich and different. <laughs> So on a more serious note, as we're gonna start going up into the mountains now, the Berbers in the various regions of Morocco pose an interesting, let's say threat to the stability, not in a bad way, but um, they're typically not really considered when Morocco is making certain policies. And so these ethnic minorities have shown signs of uh, rebelling against the greater Moroccan regime and many people argue that if there wasn't a king and the stability that that brings here, and if it was more, let's say, like openly democratic, that Morocco wouldn't last as these mountain peoples and peoples from various villages would rise up against the, let's say, larger Arabic authority. It's not, of course, 100%, but could happen. I think a favorite thing of mine in Morocco are certainly the fountains the doors and the narrow stairs. And I think this this really sums it up perfectly. You got this beautiful old fountain kind of facade. Obviously it doesn't work anymore, but really beautiful nonetheless. A beautiful Moroccan door with the big knocker. Kind of, it's really, really cool with the port. Look at that, awesome. And then here you have a narrow little path that goes up into, who knows? Oh, it's crazy how blue this city is. You know, I mean, I was expecting a blue city, but this is really like, it's really blue. So this is a typical Moroccan school based on all the kids that are coming out. And here you can see Arabic, and then on the lower part here, the traditional Berber script, which is really cool. It looks something like a combination of like, Hebrew, Greek, and Thai. Very unique looking. Yeah. All right. Let's climb this Casbah. But first, hello, street cat. <laughs> I made it now to the, call it the pinnacle of the old city. So, down here we have an old Moroccan Let's say about city walls, you know, probably built in the early 1500s. They, uh, they seem to be at the cusp of this mountain and go all the way up over here. You have the beautiful reef mountains and then everything on Ch in Chef Challenge is built onto this ridge here. So you really get a good advantageous view of the whole city from this spot and then a huge open mountain valley over here. It's weird because coming to Morocco, you always think like, you know, Bedouins, Sahara Desert, all that kind of good stuff. But um, Morocco is one of the most mountainous countries in Africa. And the entire north of Morocco is very like what you would find in Southern Spain, mountainous with cool little villages. It gets really cold here in the winter. Actually, it'll drop below zero Celsius. And uh, it's got that vibe that some people are looking for. And for me, the vibe that I'm looking for is mountain sheep. So there they are. Let me see if I can pester. I'm gonna pester a mountain sheep. Hello, mountain sheep. Oh, oh, now he's following me. Oh, now I've got some sheep following me. All right, all right, don't buck me though. Don't buck me. 
can never be too sure about sheep. One time I had a sheep headbutt my leg in, uh, in Vietnam. So, you know, animals, man. Great. The last thing I wanna talk about that's particular to Chef Shaolin, um, but also just the north of Morocco in general, is hash. Hash is a processed marijuana product, also called keef, that they, they basically take the, the marijuana and they, they pound it down into, uh, into it's, it's, you know, sticky substance. And uh, you smoke it. Typically people smoke it with tobacco here, um, but they also have small hash pipes that, uh, that you sometimes see old men, old men smoking. Um, Chef Shaolin specifically, because it's here in the mountains, uh, is known for hash. And if you come to Chef Shaolin, as you're walking down these streets, pretty much anywhere in the city, um, you'll probably be offered to sample or to buy a little bit of hash. Probably not to sample, but definitely to buy. Seems like every guy, if he's talking to you and you didn't talk to him first, is trying to sell you hash. So um, if that's not for you, then uh, I'd avoid that. But if it is for you, this is a wonderful place to partake in such a, you know, old tradition. I think tourism is absolutely hilarious because I actually have seen pictures of this place specifically. And I was like, wow, that's a beautiful street, but you actually have to pay five dirham for a picture in this beautiful location. A lot of the stuff you see, especially from like these really Instagram famous travel vloggers, it's all fake news, totally fake news. I'm trying to give you guys the real stuff, you know? The dirty streets, you know? The cats eating fish on the street. Although it's super beautiful, I have to say, I mean, like aesthetically pleasing, the most aesthetically pleasing city I think I've been to in a long time. As the sun slowly began to fade and the temperature began to drop, I knew this day trip was worth it. Going to Chef Shawin was a bucket list item for my Morocco trip, and I felt I was able to capture something totally unseen by most, a pristine and completely local experience devoid of tourists. Chef Shawin is known as one of the backpacker hotspots of Morocco, with thousands of foreigners walking the blue streets daily, Yet today, I was alone to my own devices. Through the entire day, I only saw one older couple, camera in hand, touristing the Blue Pearl. And while I was happy to walk the Medina alone, I knew that this meant that the people of Chef Shawin were particularly suffering. During my time in Morocco, you could feel this struggle in nearly every market you went to. The dollars just aren't rolling in as they used to. But I remain hopeful that the tourists will return to Morocco and life will go on just as it always has. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. We've got a lot of videos coming from Morocco, so stay tuned, and we'll catch you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum and merhaba.